everybody and welcome to another edition of Fifth Avenue Church Online. Last week we had one of our outdoor gatherings out at our venue at Pleasant Hill, which was glorious. And by the way, we have another one coming up on October 11th, so make sure you check out our website for the details about that. But we started out there a new teaching series out of the book of Philippians that's found in the New Testament portion of your Bible. And it's actually a letter written to a young church by a guy named the Apostle Paul. We're going to continue that journey today in a message I've entitled, Unfinished Statues and Confusing Road Signs. So let's get right after it, starting with Unfinished Statues. I want to read for you out of Philippians chapter 1, when I can find my scriptures, there they are. Paul writes this to this group of young believers. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. This is such an encouraging verse for me to hear. Personally, I need to remember that I am a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. I'm not all I should be. I'm not all I want to be. I'm not all I'm created to be. I'm not the me that resembles Jesus. In fact, at times, I am tempted to believe that each and every year I'm actually becoming a worse version of myself. I'm tempted to believe that because there are days when I'm not trying to be like Jesus at all. In fact, I'm just trying not to horrify Jesus by some of the things I do. The bar is pretty low for me. Like I said, I'm a work in progress. I want to show you a couple of statues right now, and they're very famous works of art by Michelangelo, and they're called the Prisoners at the Academia. And I'm actually just going to show you one. And when you look at this, you probably will think the same thing I did. I look at this and it's one of the saddest works of art I've ever seen because I look at it and think, oh God, please, please, I don't want that statue to resemble my life. I don't want to be trapped in this state of incompleteness. And I know you don't want to be either. So the question is, how do we get unstuck? How do we move forward in our journey towards being complete that Paul talks about here, becoming fully and wholly the person that we're created to be? Well, the answer to that question is the focus of my message today, and we will get to completion. Rest assured, we will get there. And this, these are the things that will get us there. Number one, God, that one word, God. God is the power that gets us to completion. This is not a self-help process. It's a God help process that we're involved in. The story of our lives is actually very similar to the story of creation that you can read about in Genesis chapter one. At the beginning of creation, there was just tohu vavohu is what it's, it's stated as in Hebrew. It means formless and void. Everything was this primordial ooze, just this giant sloppy mess. It was complete chaos. But there was the Spirit of God hovering over that chaos, dreaming of what it could be. And then God burst forth and spoke, or I believe sang creation into being, creating life and beauty out of that chaos. Sometimes all we have to offer God is our chaos. It's like we look at God and go, here's my life, God. I hope you can make something great out of it. Sorry for all the mess. That's what it's like, and that's okay, because God does some of his best work using chaos as raw material. It was true in the creation of the world, and it will be true in the creation of our lives. I came across this great quote. You'll love this. I'll put it up on the screen. It says, God is a power of attraction to what lies ahead, enabling us to move forward, to move beyond ourselves, and to become more than we currently are. Can I get an amen for that? We are unfinished works of art, but God will get us to completion because he is the power of attraction that's drawing us there. Yeah. Second thing I want to mention about this journey towards completion is other people. God is the one that gets us to completion, but one of the most important tools he uses to get us there are the other people that are in our lives. Again, another great quote I'll put up for you, this time from author and speaker Mike Mahargu. He writes this, I don't believe there is any path towards health and wholeness that can be taken alone. I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. The journey towards completeness is not a solo mission, it's a group effort. 
which is why these words that we read in Philippians chapter one, they weren't written to an individual. They were written to a collective group of people. This is such a difficult concept for most of us in the Western world to wrap our brains around because we're indoctrinated from a young age to be fiercely individual and fiercely independent. Don't lean on anybody but yourself. Yet the Bible, when you read through it, is full of another message, not a message of independence, but a message of interdependence. I want to put up another word on the screen. It's an African word, Ubuntu. And it's a glorious word. Ubuntu means I am because we are. Isn't that a great concept? I am because we are. Ubuntu helps us to realize that we're all in this journey together. It's not about independence. It's all about interdependence. So when it comes to making our journey towards completeness, we can rightly say to one another, I can't be me without you. It's true. I can't be me without you. We need each other to progress and change. We need people in our lives who will correct us, who will comfort us, who will pray for us, who will listen to us, who will help us, who will pick us up when we stumble spiritually so we can continue on our journey towards completeness. But this journey we're making with these other people that God has brought into our lives, I got to warn you, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Far from it. In the book of Proverbs, which is a book of wisdom, in chapter 27, there's this famous line that says, iron sharpens iron. And that's not just true literally, it's true symbolically as well. Iron can sharpen another piece of iron through the process of friction. Well, in our relationships, sometimes we are helped by people we get along with famously by friends and family members and loved ones and neighbors and even co-workers. There's lots of laughter and joy and their very presence in our life inspires us to become the kind of person we're created to be, to move towards completeness. And that's great. But at other times, oftentimes even, God is going to bring people into our lives that drive us crazy, that rub us the wrong way. And that's the definition of friction, isn't it? Rubbing us the wrong way. And our first response is usually to label them as Satan's little minions. And then to make plans, quick plans, to eliminate them from our experience in our lives as quickly as we possibly can. Because that's what one does with a minion. But don't be too hasty in that process. Sure, there are going to be some people in our lives, and I've spoke about this before, that are toxic to us. And we have to create very firm boundaries with them for our own emotional and spiritual and even physical safety. I get that. But sometimes God brings people into our lives that cause us friction, not to damage us, but to sharpen us, to make us more like Jesus, more patient, more loving, more compassionate, more understanding. They are not Satan's little minions. They're actually gifts to us, given to us by God that move us towards completeness and Christlikeness. That's why I love the church. So many people make the claim, hey, my spirituality is just a really personal thing. Well, I get that. I understand that. There are aspects of my spiritual life that are deeply personal, and that's fine. But ultimately, our spiritual lives are not personal. They're communal. If you insist on making your journey towards completeness alone, you won't get very far. It is too difficult to be on a solo mission. That's why I love the church. The church is a collection of people to make the journey with you and to make the journey with me. Oh, and by the way, when you're on this journey with other people towards completeness, one of the worst things you can do is compare yourself to other people. Because you're always going to run across people who seem to be more Jesus-y than you are. Don't let that defeat you. Instead, let it inspire you. Our goal shouldn't be to go, oh my goodness, they're so Christ-like, they're so godly, so holy, I'll never get there. No, don't have that kind of attitude. Instead, remember that they are funky, flawed human beings just like you are. And if they're getting there, you can too. Our goal should be to catch up with them. I remember telling you a couple months ago that Anne Lamott has a friend and um, they have a dog that's named Mostly. It's a mutt. And she asked him, well, why is it named Mostly? And they said, because it's mostly Beagle. 
<laughs> and I thought, that's what we're like. We're so much like that dog mostly because we are mostly complete. We are mostly the person we're created to be, but we still got a ways to go. But other people will be tools that God uses to get us there. Third thing I want to mention about this journey towards completeness is difficulties. Difficulties are another tool in God's hand to get us further along on the journey. Let me read two separate sections of scripture for you. The first one is out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Again, this is Paul writing, and he says this, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our own light and momentary problems are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So our difficulties are achieving something good in our lives. And now I want to read out of James chapter 1. The, the writer James says this, Consider it pure joy, my people, whenever you face trials, difficulties of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature, and there's that word, complete. So you may be mature and complete. This sounds like crazy talk to most people the first time they read verses like this. How on earth can the bad things that are happening to me, the difficulties, the problems, the trials, the troubles, be used for good purposes? It sounds crazy. That's like hearing about someone that built a house only using a corkscrew and a weed eater. What a weird selection of tools you have for building a house. But you see, God is this divine magician. And he's skilled in the methods of using odd tools to accomplish his good purposes in our life. I mean, think back in your life. This will prove it to you. Think back in your life and you'll probably realize the same thing I did. That during the most devastating and bleak and dark and trouble-filled times in my life, I look back at those and realize that those were also the times when the greatest amount of change and transformation took place in my life. Those troubles, those difficult seasons of my life, they softened me. They created empathy in me. They made me desperate for God instead of being so stubbornly self-sufficient. They humbled me to the point where I cried out to God and other people for help. So much good came out of so much bad. I wouldn't want to go through those seasons again. They sucked. They were awful. They were painstaking. But I am forever grateful for how God used them in my life. So yeah, the difficulties in our life don't impede our spiritual progress. The difficulties actually catapult us forward in our journey towards completeness. And now the last thing I want to mention about this journey towards completeness is one word, love. I save the best for last. Love is a very important, the most important tool that God uses us to get us towards completion. I want to show you two very confusing road signs right now. The first one that you're going to see is a stop sign. And if you look at it, it says stop. And this says don't go forward, don't go right, don't go left, don't go backwards. And to me, it's like, that's confusing. What do you want me to do? Just stop, just sit there forever? Just leave my car there? <laughs> I don't even understand what that stop sign means. The other one is make a right left turn. So what does that mean? Does that mean you make a right turn and you make a left turn and go in a circle? Or does that just mean you go straight? I don't know. It's confusing. These signs don't really give us much help. But fortunately, in our spiritual journey, there is a way we can get clear direction in our journey towards completeness. Let me read again out of the book of Philippians, just a little bit further down, verse 9 through 11 in Philippians 1. Paul is writing to this people and he says, And this is my prayer for you, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and what is pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. What a great few verses that is. They tell us that when we love aboundingly, when we love in great big giant scoops, our lives will be filled with deeds of righteousness and we'll, we will know what is best to do and what is pure and what is blameless. In other words, as we love, we are shown the way to completeness. 
Because every act of love that we participate in, no matter how small or how great, is a candle that is lit, that lights the way for us to see where we're supposed to be going in our lives. It lights up the person that we were created to be. We can actually see the person that we are created to be. This is echoed in other sections of scripture. In an Old Testament book called Leviticus, which I believe I'm going to preach out of next, in chapter 19, God tells the people, be holy because I am holy. Be like me. Be holy because I am holy. Or you might say, be complete because I am complete. And then the rest of the chapter is a collection of teachings showing people how they can love each other better. And the message is clear. To be complete, we cannot we cannot skip the step of love. It seems to me that in the last decade or so in the church, we have focused so much attention on having the right beliefs. We are, people are t being told in churches all over the place, you want to be complete, you want to be more like Jesus, then you need to believe these things. You need to believe all the right things. No, no, that's not where it's at. Because a person can believe all the right things and still be a total dinkus and a jerk to the people around them. Being complete, being the person we're created to be, being more like Jesus is not about believing all the right things. It's about how we live. This is why you'll occasionally run across a person that claims to be agnostic or an atheist. And yet they are further along in their path towards completeness than some people who have been inside the church for decades. Their beliefs might be all jacked up. They probably are. But they go around acting like Mother Teresa in their daily lives. They're like accidental saints. They stumbled onto the path of completeness accidentally without even knowing it. But they are heading towards the person they were created to be because their acts of kindness and love are lighting the way. Their acts of kindness and love are taking them there. And by the way, these people, they are also accidentally heading towards God because God is love. So every experience of love is an experience of God. God. So little do they know it, but their very lifestyle is causing them to collide into God in countless ways every single day. So how fun is that? How fun is that? So love, let me sum up here, lights the way for us on our journey towards completeness. Okay, I've talked enough. Let me pray for us today, but let me remind you to get on our website. There's a lot of happenings, small church gatherings all over the area that you can sign up for. I'm in one and I absolutely love it. The large church gathering that I spoke of earlier, that's October 11th, and even more things that you can check out, discussions and videos you can see, and past sermons and worship times. So check out our newly reformed um, website. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for the hope that you gave us today. We are works in progress, but we don't have to be stuck in an unfinished state. You will complete the work you started in us, using other people and even our own difficulties as tools to get the job done, and using our acts of love to light the way for us on our journey. And to all of this, we simply say, thank you, thank you, Thank you. And everyone said, amen. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a glorious rest of your week. Blessings in your life. See you next week.